Hello children. I hope all of you all are doing fine and finally now we are going to start with the portions of class 8 grammar section. All this while we were only doing the literature part but now after our first midterm exams we have decided to start with the grammar portions and this time the grammar portions are a little on the tougher side where we will be doing the main topics which will be uh, used for the next 4 years continuously and moreover uh, you have to know the basics of all these topics that we are teaching you now because from class 9 onwards you will not be having a textbook to rely on so the only textbook that you will be having to you know keep referring to your doubts or getting your doubts clear would be your class 8 textbook so now itself we teachers are telling you please do not dispose of your class 8 grammar textbook after you you know pass out from this class keep it uh, handy because you all will be needing it quite frequently for your reference so the topic that we are going to start is tenses we are not going to cover all the topics of this lesson the main topics that you will be needing for the next 4 years of your english uh, school years uh, is uh, first one is uh, tenses now before we go into tenses we have to do a little recap of some of the parts of speech that we had done previously so here in tenses the main that part of speech that we are going to be using is the verbs now first uh, about verbs if we uh, if i tell you it is subject verb agreement that you all have been doing for the past two years in your lower classes so uh, before you you know listen to these videos of our tenses you read and uh, be familiar with all the rules of the subject verb agreement then the next one is of verbs that also we will be only uh, what do you say referring to parts of speech okay uh, parts of speech that also we will be referring to only the types of uh, uh, verbs or the kinds of verbs now if i ask you what do you understand by the term or by the word verbs immediately we all stick to the basic uh, definition what we have been learning from class 1 verb means action words any word that denotes action is called verb so that is how we go by the definition or if you look into your textbook now the definition that is given here a verb is a word or a phrase that says or asserts about a person or a thing so it is nothing but you know you are asserting about what that person is doing what action that person is doing so for example if i have given you a doctor treats patients okay now immediately i if we ask you to identify what is the verb in this sentence so immediately the word that denotes action so here it is treats okay now what is this word it is asserting something about which person we are asserting about the doctor that is the subject okay children so this is when it comes to verbs so that is basic like what do you under what you mean by verbs the definition of verbs so verbs action verb now after that we will be uh, needing is the kinds of verbs now you all have done transitive verbs and transitive verbs yes that keep aside that you will be not uh, that we will not be needing for tenses but what we are been needing for tenses is kinds of verbs now kinds of verbs there are two kinds of verbs main verb and auxiliary verb now if you look into the main verb it is nothing but it is written as principal verb now what do you mean by principal verb main verb is an action word that can complete the action alone means it is an independent verb it does not need the help of any other word to complete its action okay now moving on to the second part what is the next verb that is auxiliary verb auxiliary verb i have given you the meaning it is given as helping verb helping verb they cannot stand alone they are paired with main verbs to communicate an action okay they always 
need the support of some other verbs to communicate the action to us to tell us what they are, what they are trying to tell us about that verb now this auxiliary verb is further divided into two types that is primary auxiliary and models okay now moving on to the next screen now what do you mean by primary auxiliary primary auxiliary is nothing but the b form of the verbs now i am not going to go into the details of what are the b form of the verbs this you just keep in mind because i have given you the list of the b form of verbs now the b form of verbs is is am are was were then has have had do does did okay this is the primary auxiliary verbs and then of course you have got the models models are can could may might will would shall should might or ought to now these two are the you know some very rarely used models the main what are used is this one can could may might will would shall and should now the combination of the main verb along with the auxiliary verbs helps us to form tenses in a sentence now we are finally coming into the topic what we are going to learn about so that is what so a main verb along with an auxiliary verb helps us to create tenses okay now moving on to the next slide now finally we are starting with the topic what is a tense so if you go by the definition the tense indicates the time of the action or a state of being in the past present or future so time when the action was done whether it was done in the past in the past means not now but a few seconds before or last year 10 years before past that has already happened present as you go by the definitive present what is happening now now this very moment and future what is yet to happen that means in the next 5 minutes you do not know what is there in the future for the next 5 minutes so that is what it is if you go by the terms of the present the action the time of the action that was done either in the past or the present or the future so this is you go by the definition of what do you understand by the term tense now tenses we are coming to the type of the tenses the types of tenses present tense now present tense means what it refers to the action or the state of being at the time of speaking now here i am standing and speaking so this is present tense now the next one past tense an action that has already taken place or existed sorry existed before the time of speaking now just before i started recording of the video that is called the past what has already happened and gone now future an action that is expected at a certain time in the future that is yet to happen now i do not know what is going to happen in the next 5 minutes so that is yet to happen that is in the future so these are the main tenses that we are going to learn about so that is past tense present tense and the future tense now each of these tenses are further subdivided into four that is the simple tense the continuous tense the perfect tense and the perfect continuous tense okay now uh here if you go by the simple present tense now how do you express simple present tense so the form in which you are going to uh, what do you say express simple present tense is nothing but subject plus the verb okay now for example now we are only going to be dealing with the simple present tense now only talking now this uh, module we will be only doing is simple uh, not simple present tense we are going to be dealing about uh, present tense and the different types of tenses that are there in it so now here how will you express simple present tense so the form is subject 
plus the verb okay now for example you are given verb is read so how will you express it in the simple present tense so you will be expressing it in i read so subject plus the verb so that is how you are going to be expressing uh, it into the simple present tense now here how can you express your simple present tense in an affirmative form in the negative form and in the interrogative form now affirmative means a positive statement negative you know is usually a statement which has which consists of the word no or not and interrogative you know it is one of the parts of speech where you have to have the question mark you are asking for something and which needs a reply so now here if you i have put it in a tabular form so that you know at a glance you will be able to identify how you can express it now we are going to be dealing with the verb read here okay now how will you express it in the first person singular and in the first person plural and how each of this can be expressed in the affirmative negative and the interrogative form now for example we are taking the verb read okay now first person here first person is we are talking about the pronoun first person second person third person i hope you remember that okay so now in the tenses also these you know first person second person third person is also very very important especially when you have to interchange the position of the verb of the verb and the pronoun then the subject and verb agreement also has to be kept into uh, mind when you are you know uh, interchanging the verb and the pronoun now how will you uh, read this uh, like for example your verb given is read okay now the first person pronoun when you express it in the singular form it is i read remember we are doing just present tense okay simple present tense now if you have to express it in the plural first person plural we read okay now the same statement how are you going to express it in the negative form now remember negative means the presence of the word no or not has to be there so i do not or i don't read any of these two words you can use okay so look here i do not or don't read and if you have to express it in the plural as uh, a plural form we don't read or we do not read then how will you express it in the interrogative form interrogative means now what the asking of a question so remember one thing is that when you ask a question you have to put the question mark also at the end of the uh, sentence okay so now here how will you write it in the interrogative form now your given sentence is i read how will you express it in the interrogative form do i read okay do i read then don't forget you have to have the question mark at the end of the sentence now in the same way how we'll express it in the plural form do we read and then of course the question mark so this is with regard to the first person now second person is what you okay so you read and when you express it in the plural also it will come as you read how will you express it in the negative form you don't read or you do not read your you do not read again then how will you express it in the singular form do you read question mark and in the plural form do you read both the singular and the plural form goes in the same manner then in the third person third person is what he she it in the singular form and when you have to express it in the plural form it becomes they so he she it reads now see here here it is a subject verb agreement remember i told you you have to even remember about the subject verb agreement so here your verb becomes into the plural form when your subject is in the singular but when you express it in the plural you 
see the change in the verb it is they read so here your subject is in the plural and your verb becomes singular so you have to remember about the subject verb agreement also when you are you know have this conversion of sentences especially uh, when you have to convert it into the negative or into the interrogative now how will you do it so now how will you do this third uh, part interrogated does he read question mark or when you have to express it in the plural form do they read Okay, children, have you all understood this? So this is how you will express it in the affirmative, negative, and in the interrogative form. In the first person, second person, third person, in the singular, and in the plural form. So now this table it keeps on repeating for each of the each subdivision of what we are going to do in tenses. Now going to the next one, we move to the present continuous tense now before we move on to the present continuous tense you have got an exercise in your textbook that is on page uh, 75 of your grammar textbook you will have to do exercise d okay you have got exercise a b c that is not needed that is just basically you know match the following you know we are not going to do those simple exercises but you have to do exercise d of page 75 before we move on to the next part of your present tense so the next one is present continuous tense so the word continuous signifies what or what does it what do you understand by it that the action is still going on okay it is now at the time of speaking the action is still going on so how will you express it so the form in which you are going to express it subject plus because we are talking about in the present form it is is am are plus your verb that is given there but in the ing form continuous okay so whenever you hear or listen to the word continuous means you, your verb will always be ending in an ing form okay so now for example if your given verb is eat okay how are you going to express this in the present continuous tense so here i put the subject as i am eating i am eating now this is how you are going to express a given sentence in the present continuous form now if you have got now all these also you have to express it in the affirmative negative and in the interrogative form now for example if you are given verb is read okay how are you going to express in the first person singular then second person singular and in your third person singular and plural now this is the same table as how i have showed you how to express it in the simple present tense so now if i just okay i'll do the first person here if it your if your first person is i okay you know your first person i in the singular is i and in the plural form it is we now your given verb i have told you is read so since we are doing present continuous tense you will express it as i am reading in the plural we are reading now if it is in the negative i am not reading negative okay we are not reading if you have to express it in the interrogative am i reading that is in your singular and if it is in the plural are we reading now remember here it is always the subject and the verb agreement because your i is singular the verb that you will be using is am here because it is the verb uh, subject is plural your verb has to agree with the subject that is so are we reading okay i hope this uh, table is clear to you now how you are going to express it in the second person second person singular as well as second person plural are both same you so there is no difference in this so you are reading affirmative same way in the plural also you are reading if you have to convert it into the negative you are not reading in the singular form same way goes you are not reading in the plural form also 
are you reading that's in the interrogative form in the singular are you reading that's the same in the plural form also okay now how will you express it in the third person third person singular is he she or it and third person plural is they so if you have to express it he she it is reading and in the plural they are reading because remember the plural they so the verb you have to use is are they are reading then if you have to convert it into a negative he she it is not reading and here they are not reading then if you have to convert it into the interrogative is he or she reading or are they reading so i hope children you have understood how to convert this into the affirmative negative as well as interrogative sentence now here before we move on to the next part of the uh, tenses like this thing here also before you start of uh, listening to the audio of present perfect tense you have to do your exercise e in your textbook of page 77 okay do that exercise and then only uh, continue to listen to the remaining of this uh, tenses module then after that after you do that exercise we will start with the present perfect tense okay how will you express present perfect tense as you know in a given sentence you have the subject plus the verb and then the remaining of that which will give you information about it now for example how will you express it so you have got the verb sorry sorry subject plus the verb has or have because we are doing still doing present has or have plus the verb that is in the past participle form of the verb okay the past participle form of the verb now the past participle form of the verb usually it you know ends with an en ed t d okay these are how the verbs of the past participle usually end with okay usually not you know 100 we're saying not all the words they usually end with this okay so now if you are given verb is eat then i have eaten your verb child the past participle of the verb eat is eaten e n so that i told you how they are either e n or e d or t or d okay now the same how are you going to express it in the affirmative negative and in the interrogative sentence so now here i'll just swipe this up so you will be able to understand now i am not going to be explaining this every time i'll just read through it now first person first person pronoun how will you express it in the singular i have eaten how will you express it in the plural we have eaten then if you have to express it in the negative i have not eaten if you have to express it in the plural form we have not eaten then interrogative have i eaten or have we eaten that is how you are going to be expressing this of the in the first person now with regard to the second person second person is what you in the singular form as well as in the plural form now how will you express it in the uh, singular form you have eaten same way it goes that side also you have eaten now if you have to express it in the negative you have not eaten because here we are talking about negative then same way here you have not eaten then how are you going to express it in the interrogative form have you eaten you cannot say has has you eaten you can either see it is uh, earlier it was there where you can express your uh, form as has or have isn't it but when we 
have to see that it agrees with the subject okay so here you have not eaten you have not eaten in the plural form also here when you have to convert it into the interrogator have you eaten have you eaten both in the singular and in the plural form both are in the same now how will you express this in the third person pronoun so here third person singular is actually he she or it so he she it has eaten they have eaten he she it has not eaten they have not eaten plural has he she it eaten remember because it's interrogator you have to you know always remember to put the question mark at the end here because in the plural form have they eaten so this is how you go about doing the present perfect tense okay children so i hope with this you have understood how with this table you have express uh, understood how to go about expressing it in the affirmative negative and in the interrogative and how to express it in this form it is how you'll express subject plus has or have plus a past participle of the verb so that is how you are going to express the present perfect tense okay now before you move on to the next uh, part of the uh, present uh, present tense you have to do exercise f and g of your textbook that is uh, they are all basically fill in the blanks exercise so you can do it in your textbook itself it is you know page 78 of your textbook exercise f and exercise g okay so now after this we will move on to the next slide where you will be learning about the present perfect continuous tense okay now this tense is a combination of your continuous tense as well as a perfect tense so present perfect continuous tense how will you express the present perfect continuous tense so i told you it's a combination of your present tense as well as of your continuous tense so both together you have got your present perfect continuous tense so how will you express it subject plus has or have plus been plus the ing form of the verb that is how you are going to express a sentence in the present perfect continuous tense okay now for example we will take your given verb is sing how will you express this in your present perfect continuous tense so i have been singing ing form have so present perfect so perfect always has a has or the have continuous action is still going on but along with that you have to add the word been also so i have been singing that is how you are going to express a given sentence in this present perfect continuous tense now how are you going to express a sentence in the affirmative negative and in the interrogative form when with regard it being in the present perfect continuous tense now for example here your given verb is exercise okay so now here i'll just swipe up the board up your given verb is exercise how we are going to express it in the first person singular and in the plural when it comes to the affirmative so here i have been exercising present perfect continuous tense in the singular form how will you express it in the plural we have been exercising okay then negative as i have told you 
in the is just you know you have to just insert the word not there to make that sentence negative so i have not been exercising we have not been exercising then how will you express it in the interrogative have i been exercising don't forget the question mark at the end and have we been exercising so this is with regard to the first person singular and first person plural now how will you express it in the second person singular and plural since there is no change in the you know singular and plural both will be the same you have been exercising that is the second person present perfect continuous tense you have not been exercising that is uh, in the singular as well as in the plural then have you been exercising and in the same way for singular as well as for plural it is the same so that is how you are going to express it in the uh, affirmative negative and in the interrogative now how you will express it in the third person singular third person singular is what he she it so he she has been exercising because you are in the singular form your verb is also in the singular how will you express it in the plural they they have been exercising because your uh, subject is in the plural your verb also has taken the plural form then negative you have to just insert the word not here and here also you have to insert the word not there then when it comes to the interrogative has he or she been exercising that's in the singular have they been exercising that's in the plural form so this is how you are going to express this in your present perfect continuous tense okay now before that gets over you have to even know the usage of you know the verb since and for now when you going are you going to use the word since since indicates the point of time at which an action started that what time the action starts that time you will be using the verb since so we have not eaten since yesterday at what time from what time that action has started since yesterday so that is how you, there you will be using since then when are you going to use the word for for indicates the time for which an action has been going on from when that action has been going on so the house repair work has been going on for 3 weeks so from when it has started from for 3 weeks it has been going on so these are the two uh, terms you have to you know keep in mind when you are going to be doing the present perfect continuous tense so before we move into the next exercise you will have to do exercise h and i from your textbook that is on page 78 and page 79 so and then after that so we are finishing off with this a uh, lesson so uh, i need you all to be doing the remaining exercises of your textbook uh, uh, they are all fill in the blanks which can be done in your textbook that is exercise j k which is on page 79 l and m that's on page 80 exercise n because you that's the last exercise in your textbook you can write the answers there itself in your textbook so that whenever we have the google live session we can discuss these exercises there itself so i will end my first module here where we are completing off with the present tense of this uh, lesson okay so all the four subdivisions also are covered and i hope you all have understood each of the subdivisions with the explanations any doubts can be cleared in our google session thank you children